day. Oh, yeah? I wasn't expecting you to be here. What's the one for? I've just got to pick up a few things, that's all. What things? Just things. So give me this list. Oh, sent you round as his messenger boy again, has he? Come on, I feel really bad about this, you know. So you should. So what's he said to you about me and him? Nothing. Honestly, just paid for the van iron and told me to pick up the stuff that's on the list. What stuff? Well, not just read it for yourself, then you'll know. I don't want to. Just tell me what he wants. He wants half of everything. Half of everything? There you go. I have half his list for a start. I get on with it then. Yeah. Bye bye, Mr. Ron Dixon. Wouldn't be so bad if he was just a shopkeeper on the same row. Makes it harder when he's a neighbour and you know his family. Yeah, but he was the one who saw George Webb with the petrol bomb. He's the one the police need to speak to. It'd be better for him if he goes of his own accord. End with you. What happens if he gets done in court for being part of the attack? What happens if he goes down for it? Eh? To me, that's got to walk past his family every day for as long as he's locked up. He was the one who got himself into this. You don't have to feel sorry for him. Uh, I know what it's like being in court when you're innocent, though. Well, the sooner you get it done, the sooner you'll stop worrying about doing it. Yeah. We're doing the right thing here, aren't we? Yeah. We've got no choice. We're doing the right thing. Just chopping the till up, okay? Oh, great, thanks. Um, has there been any follow-up to this petrol bombing business last week? No, thank goodness. No one had told you. Yeah, you seem very worried. So we should. And anyway, I'm trying to forget about it. Oh, right, yeah. Um, did you have a good time at this concert you went to the other night? Oh, yeah, the band's amazing, honest, and the lights and everything about it. No, I've been to a few good concerts in my time. Hey, they were lighting them with candles in your day. Oh, cheek. I saw Dylan at the Isle of Wight, me. Dylan who? Bob Dylan. Before your time, love. I wouldn't have thought you were the sort to go to these big rock festivals. I wasn't. I was dragged there by the last fella I was with before Jimmy. You should have seen the state of me. Four days soaking in an old tent, wrapped in his stinking Afghan coat. I couldn't get clean for weeks. Eee, sounds disgusting. Uh, what was the name of the band, do you want to say? Uh, the Beautiful South. Sounds like an advert from a holiday programme. Yeah, there's one of the bands in the programme there. Paul Heaton. He's gorgeous, isn't he? Hey, I'll see you later. Where are you going? I'm just going round to Casey's to borrow one of the tapes. Ciao, love. Ciao. Tell you who else was on at the Isle of Wight. Jimi Hendrix. Ah, oh, what a performer. Do you know, you would have been 50 this week if you hadn't have died so young. Ah, oh. I think I'd rather remember him young and fit than fast and 50. Oh, here, yeah, here he is. Brookside's answer to Jimi Hendrix. Eh, uh, Ron's not about, is he? Uh, he's got on the cash and carry, but he won't be long. Oh, right. Really, I can help you with me. No, I should see him. Actually, the uh, motor's just rolled up outside. Oh, cheers. I wonder what he wants run for. I wish I knew. Good night, Mick. If this is a welcoming party, it doesn't look very welcoming. I need a word. Right, uh, just put these inside, OK? Go ahead. Right. Far away. Me and Ellis have been talking. We think we should report the whole petrol bomb business to the police. That's me down the pan, then, isn't it? We've got to take Webb to court and get him done, Ron. And you're the only witness. Yeah, but he's not going to say that, is he? He'll say I was helping him. I can't get it out of my mind. If there are people walking around that could firebomb innocent kids, and the police need to know about it. Yeah. Well, I suppose if I smoked, now is about the time I'd have my last cigarette, isn't it? You know what, Mick? When I was a kid, my old fella used to batter me for doing something wrong. I used to wish I could turn the clock back. You know what I mean? Can't do it, though, can he? No. What's up, love? Mick and Alice have been doing some thinking. We can't handle all this anymore without getting the police involved. Yeah, but you know what could happen to Ron, Mick. Come on, dear. It's not Mick's fault. We'll go to the police because it's the right thing to do. 
You sure that's the only solution, Ray? Look, it's burning me up inside, but that guy's walking around laughing at us because he thinks he's got away with it. George Webb knows where you live. He's already attacked your family once, Mick. Are you sure one of his crew won't come round again if you get the police involved? So what am I supposed to do? Let him get away with it? Yeah, but he'll take Ron down with him, won't he? I'm already down, love. I'm sorry, man. Oh, I know the score, mate. Suppose I'm a fault for not going to the police early. Right, love. Better go around and see what they have to say. Do you want me to go with you? No, no, it's all right. We'll take the Moby, Annie. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll go in and see if... Oh, you're joking. It's just a tenor it was, mate. What, today? Oh. Look, I don't believe this. What, bad news, is it? Yeah, this has come from head office, has it? Just a tenor, it was. Look, I haven't got any staff on. You do know that. Yes? Just a tenor, it was. Thank you very much. Oh, about half an hour. I've got a load of um, programme proofs I've got to drop off at the charity offices first. Well, come in with me. Meet the assistant director if you like. Oh, great, yeah. Um, excuse me. What? This pump doesn't seem to be working properly. Well, that's right. Oh, is it broken? It's switched off. Oh, right. Um, is that one working? Look, we're shut, OK? Shut? Since when? None of my business. Mill points for customer care, I'd say. Excuse me. Hang on a minute. You can take this as well. Hi, what are you doing? He wants half everything, doesn't he? Oh, well, you can have to plug in the wire and I'll have the iron. Come on, Dad, you're being stupid now. Not as stupid as I was marrying him in the first place, eh? Well, I don't even be doing this, you know. Right, these will do. Wants half of everything. Well, I'll have the sins. He can have the lids. And you can tell him. If he wants to argue about anything, he can come and do it himself. Well, I don't think he will, not from Hull. Yeah, well, I'm just making it clear. He's only entitled to half everything until Friday. After that, it's tough. It's not our house, then. So, one to half of everything. You can have half the washing up the food. Oh, you'll have done such a good job getting him half of everything. Do whatever you like, Diamond. Mean, I don't even want to be here. I feel like a repo man. That's all you are. Listen, when I come back in, if you haven't cut the plug off the kettle, can I make us a cup of coffee? Of course you can. As long as you use one of Rod's spoons and one of his cups as well. And uh, when it comes to the couch, have you got a chainsaw I can cut it in half with? <sighs> Says open on your door. Well, to you, we're shut. I've come to tell you something. Oh, yeah? Like what? Like you won't be seeing much more of me around here again. And why's that? I'm moving on to pastures new. Well, I hope it's somewhere you feel at home, like Soweto. <laughs> no, I've decided I've done what I wanted to do here. I'm sad you're leaving. We'd only just started having a go at you. Well, you would have had to have worked that little bit harder than you did. Well, you're going to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Well, I've brought you a little, uh, a little leaving present. And what's that? She's a friend of yours, isn't she? We've got strict hygiene rules in here. I don't want your filth on my counter. You, uh, you know her, don't you? Do I? Yeah. Marion Dwyer. Local education officer. What's she doing in that? Who'd put someone like her in charge of schools? It's no wonder there's so many problems at schools these days. 
People like her, women like this Dwyer, poisoning kids' minds with foreign filth. That's right, go for me, and I'll do you for assault. Good. Oh, I'm going. I'm going. Oh, uh, just one little thing. Uh, me and a few chums were, well, we were browsing through the telephone directory and we, we came across Marion Dwyer's name, her address, her phone number. Well, you know, just in case something happens to me. It's, well, it's like a little insurance policy. If you or your brother come after me. Or go crying to the police. Traffic warden was going to boot me then for standing still. Jackie, have you seen them? Hello. Mick and Ron, have they gone to the police station yet? Yeah, they have, love, yeah. They went a few minutes ago. What's wrong? I just need to talk to them. Ellis! Should I go after him? Just sit tight, D. It's all out of our hands now, anyway. Right, hotel next. Check out the room for the fashion show. You know, this is an amazing building. Yeah, it used to be the Beatles Museum. There's a passing resemblance to a certain yellow submarine. <laughs> right, what's on the hotel list? Catwalk? A uh, hotel provides that. Table plan? Getting there slowly. Lighting. As a specialist firm, the hotel has one company they regularly use, and they've been contacted. I think so, but I'll double check. Makeup mirrors and full length mirrors. Hotel and the clothing suppliers checked. Clothes rails? Hotel and suppliers checked. Refreshments for models? On the list to talk to the hotel about. Car and chauffeur for celebrity? Oh, there's a nice freebie there. Private firm in return for an hour in the programme. Great. Right, anything else? Well, not that I can think of. Thanks very much, thanks. Oh, it seems impressed. Well, I think we're doing them proud. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I know it doesn't exactly do us any harm putting on a charity show, but oh, as far as the client's concerned, we seem to be putting them firmly on the map. Right. Hotel, then. I'm really not in the mood for this at all. I can see the headlines now. National Tree Week, special edition. Local deputy headmistress plants tree and saves planet. While her family life crumbles to the ground with a bad case of wayward sun disease. Yes. I don't see why we have to cooperate with the press one day when they're printing the name of our son as an accused rapist the next. I can't let the school down. This has been planned for ages. <sighs> well, you know what they say? We'll be able to laugh about this one day. In our dreams, you mean? I suppose I do. Well, looks like the neighbours are getting closer to moving out. Don't stare. Why not? I can't wait to see the back of them. Looks like Rod can't be bothered to show his face. Guess his pals do it for him. He's probably too embarrassed. I'm not saying much for the taste of them, so. Stop staring. Well, you can tell a lot about people about the furniture, you know. Just start the car. I never thought I'd violently hate anybody. Didn't think I had it in me. Let's go. I don't think I could control myself if we got into a confrontation with them. All I wanted to do was to come up here with you to your new job and get on with life but until I was too old to care. I didn't want any of this filthy mess. I don't want my son dragged through it. I don't want us dragged through it. We'll cope. So, what a story this is going to be to tell the police, eh? We can't let Webb get away with what he's doing, Rob. You know what, Mick? When I first stopped Webb from pencil bombing your house, I thought I was going to be a hero. Not much time for me now, is there? Right, we're going in then. When you're ready. Just go in and tell the true crew. <laughs> true? <laughs> 
There's going to be you and Ellis telling them how I was discovered with a petrol bomb in the middle of the night outside my neighbour's house, and he's black. And there's going to be George Webb goose stepping it up there with all his Nazi mates, swearing that I'm a regular at all their meetings. That's what changed my name to Adolf Eichmann. So, what do you think? Catwalk down the middle, models and backstage, that tent, tables all round, guest celebrity tables just somewhere there, and we'll display the raffle prizes next to it. Sound about right. Sounds great to me. I can't believe you haven't done a fashion show before. Oh, I wish I had. It helps having been to some of Max's round table do's, but the closer it gets, the more nervous I get. I think I'll have forgotten something glaringly obvious. Let's have a coffee. Well, I think we're doing OK for beginners. Shh, don't let anyone know we're beginners. Right. I think it look great in here. Mm. Now, is there anything else we need? Yes, definitely. Another pair of hands to help out, because I'm beginning to feel a bit stretched on this little project. Oh, two coffees, please. Yeah, I know the feeling. I mean, can we afford to take someone on? And can we afford not to? I mean, we're rushed off our feet as it is with the guest and celebrity side of things. Need someone who can concentrate on liaison and logistics. Well, any ideas? Don't know yet. I'd have to think through exactly what we needed. Anything else? Well, I was going to take you up and show you the celebrity suite. It is rather nice. Yeah, I can think of someone I'd prefer to check it out with than you. Oh, yes. Pleasure before business. Someone I've got a date with on Friday night. Oh, I see. Anyone we know? A certain property developer of your acquaintance. Barry Grant. Well, fancy that. I do, which is why we've got a date. <laughs> Um, I know you're on edge, Dee, but it's freezing in here with that open. Just get frantic here. I wonder what's happening to Ron. Well, just be patient. Should I go down to the police station? It's no use upsetting yourself until we know the outcome. Wherever it is, you'll survive us. Hey, where's my dad? Oh, he's just gone out, love. Um, was it just you and Casey Rogers who went to this concert then, or was there a big gang of you? Yeah, me, Casey and Leon. Oh, is that the same Leanne your mum found half naked in the back of that lad's van? Yes, it is. Uh, that's the kind of company my daughter keeps. Oh, I don't know. The kids are today, eh? Anyway, Leanne and Paul are finished now. Well, it didn't last very long. Yeah, well, that's because he was only after one thing. And when he got what he wanted, he just got off. Well, that's why I dumped him. I knew what he was like. Oh, I'm too young to be a grandmother. I would have a husband in prison. So how's Rod, then? You know what it's like, he doesn't say much. Except don't get half the stuff in the house, eh? I've got his phone number there if you want to give him a ring. Is he still in digs? Yeah. Still doing the security job? Yeah, it sounds as though he's running there. Do you want his number? He probably won't talk to me. I just want to know how he was. Well, depressed, I suppose. What's he feeling depressed about? Well, he's missing the police force real bad. <laughs> Not missing me, then. How did I say that? Wasn't top of your list, was I? Well, I just said the police force for the sake of saying something. I wasn't grading the things he was missing out of ten. No, just me. Come on. Hey, what's going on? Have you seen anyone yet? Oh, no, I was just about to then. We can't tell the police about that. What? That'd have to be a good reason to stop. We him. can't tell him. I've just had a visit from him. What from when? Has he been around threatening you? No, not me. Are the kids alright? Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem with the kids. He wasn't threatening me or the kids this time. He's threatening Marianne. Marianne? What's happening, lads? You just stay out of this, okay? Let's go for someone else. It's what we want. No, no, Ellis. We'll go back in there and tell the police. I mean, people like Webb shouldn't be allowed to walk around, should they? And we should have to spend our lives behind locked doors because we're too scared to go out. Yeah, I know. You know what, that's why we're here. That's why we're here to tell the police that. We can't tell the police, Mick. Mm. What we can't do is spend the rest of our lives crawling on our hands and knees because of scum like Webb. Webb said he's going to leave the area. Well, if he's going to disappear, that's all the more reason why we get the law on him now. Mick, listen to what I'm saying to you. He had a photograph of her. What photograph? In that, in that New Britain magazine, a big attack on blacks in the education system. He set fire to a photograph right in front of me. If we go to the police, Marianne gets targeted. He knows her name, he knows where she lives, he knows where she works. He tried to bear my kids, Alice. Yeah, I know. So we should be locked up. Mick, I know, but I love her. 
So what are you saying? We just walk away and pretend it didn't happen? I can't take the risk of Webb's mates taking out their revenge on me. At least this is all wrong. It's all wrong. We should be in there telling the police now. I want what the police have done, huh? Oh, send someone around to give them a serious talking to. At least they should know what Webb is getting into. That man could kill somebody. Like Marianne. You know what you're saying, aren't you? You're letting Webb and his racist scum beat us. I love her, Mick. I want to live with her. I don't want to bury her. I'm no superhero. I'm just me. Ron, you better come out. What's happening? Why not go on the police? Why not? I can't believe it, why not? I believe it, eh? Because I can't. Hey, listen, lads, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know that this has got me out of all sorts of bother, don't you, eh? What happened to change the plan? We've decided to spend the rest of our lives on our knees. We stood up when it mattered. I can't believe this. Come on, lads. Thanks a lot for saving me, Nick. You want me to shake hands with a racist? Come on, Alice. Can't we put all that behind us now? Just leave it, Eric. Behind us? I'm still black, Ron. I'll always be black. It won't rub off. And you'll always be a racist. Come on, Nick, I'll give you a lift off. So we'll walk back. Mick? Oh, come on, Mick. I'm not like Webb, you know that. I'm not a Nazi. That's a lot for odd, then. Yeah. Um, listen, if you need to move any of your gear, I wouldn't mind helping, you know. Well, would you? Got no one else. Gonna have the van back for Friday. Will you be ready to move out by then? That'll be fine. I've not got much and it's only got to go round to Julius. Okay. I'll better get off then. Hey, listen, I'll be phoning Rod tonight. Do you want me to try and get him to come round and have a talk? Or... What's the left to talk about? I don't know. Do you want me to send any message? He wouldn't stand by me when I need some, would he? I don't need him anymore. I'm not proud to be his wife anymore. He wanted half of everything. He can have all of this. I hope you're watching Brookside exceedingly carefully today because now is another chance to win a £100 shopping voucher. We've got 50 of them to give away. After each programme, we're asking a question. Here's the Brookie one. What was the name of the band Jackie Dixon went to see? What was the name of the band that Jackie Dixon went to see? If you know the answer, you need to phone a special competition phone number, not our usual number. Don't email us on our usual email address. What we just want is this phone number, so scribble it down, 0870 900 8687. 0870 900 8687. That's our competition line. Our full research is being inundated, but you need to ring that number. And if you are a winner, your name will be on the living... Right, get the kettle on. The removal man's here. I thought you'd taken all the stuff Rod wanted. I said I'd give Diana the end of day stuff today. Oh, right. What are you doing here anyway? I thought you were here one ages ago. Oh, I've just come to give me Nana a hand with the cleaning up. So is Diana in then? Yeah, she's upstairs. She's a bit wound up then. Oh, I'd better go and see what she wants doing first. Hiya, love. Nan, what's all that? I treated myself to a new mop and broom set. I thought it'd be no better day to try it out. You didn't bring that on the bus, did you? I did. 
And if I got one more comedian asking me why I wasn't flying here on my broomstick, I'd have bored me to death and be cold. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya. Hiya, love. How are you? I'm all right. I just can't stand seeing me home pulled apart around me. It was my own before it was his. How did you think I feel watching it being torn apart? You just have to grit your teeth and face up to it, love. Brings it all back. Oh, just ignore him. Look at him. He's got a face of turned milk sour on him. Has he gone? Yeah. Oh, he's just getting in his car. Is everything packed? More or less, yeah. It's just a clean enough to do now. I haven't been feeling up to it. I'm not surprised. You've done enough already. Listen, Tommy said he can manage. I think I'll take a walk around to the shops. Oh, that sounds like a good idea to me. Only I hope you're not going to get any more cleaning materials because I've got enough to do the QE too here. I just thought I'd get everyone biscuits. I won't be long. I don't need to go worrying about your skating boards, girl. I'll soon have them gleaming. Oh, Tommy, you Round the shops. She's better off out the way. It's just upsetting and all this. Well, you'd be miserable if you were going through what she is. Yeah, well, she wouldn't be going through any of this if she hadn't been so stupid in the first place. Hey, come on now. Let's just get on with the job in hand and stop talking about people behind their backs. So, uh, are you going to cope having Diana and Stacey at your place, then? Oh, don't worry about us, love. We'll cope. I hope. Hello, love. Hiya. Any for me? Uh, not unless you want the telephone bill. Yeah, no, thanks. Listen, love, uh, any chance of a little word while our Tony's not here? Yeah, what about? Well, you still want to work part-time down the petrol station? It's hard to doubt Mr Webber take me back on after the way I've messed him about this week. Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry too much about that. See, the petrol station have moved him on. Oh, so I'm allowed to go back there, am I, now? Yes. Fortunately, I think we've seen the last of our Mr Webb. What's that? Looks like old Georgie boy is having one less dig at us. Hey, that's sick, that. Hiya. How are you? I thought you'd gone to school. Yeah, I for forgot my project file. Oh. Hey, listen, son, while you're here, uh, do you ever see any of these kind of newspapers handed out around the school gates? Oh, I don't really know. Yeah, well, if you do, make sure you let me know, all right? All right, why? Because these kind of people have got to be confronted, that's why. All right, can I have some money for a camp? No, you can't. You can use the school fountain like I used to do when I was your age. All right, see ya. Can't. I didn't know these inventors water when you were this age. Cheek. And the same goes for you, you know, Jackie. If you see anybody handing out this kind of rubbish to any kids, you come and tell me, all right? Yeah, well, how come you've turned into the big anti-racist all of a sudden? Well, I haven't. I just want to make it clear what's right and wrong, that's all. Oh, I see. And racism's wrong now, is it? Well, of course it's wrong. We're all the same underneath, aren't we? Yeah, it's just that you never said that when I was going out with Keith. Yeah, well... We all make mistakes, don't we? Thanks. Uh, you've not seen Barry, have you? No, sorry, love. I'll tell him you're looking for him if I do see him. All right, thanks. Ta-da. Ciao. Oh, hello, darling. Um, 59 pence, please. You look tired. I am, yeah. It stays over. Is it your last day in the house, is it? Thanks. Oh, Diana. I'm sorry. It's just been a bad week. It's all getting on top of me now. Well, it's bound to, love. Do you want to stay and have a coffee or something? No, I'll be all right. I don't want to make a shame of myself. I'm a bit stuck here, you know. Otherwise, we could have gone off and had a chat somewhere. I'll be all right. Listen, if you want a bit of company for a few minutes, what about Patricia Varnum? Well, you get on well with her, don't you? Yeah. I might pop in and see if she's there. I hope it all works out for you, love. Thanks. Sure. So what are we going to do with this? Well, Rod said he just wants it dumped. You can't just jump a good bed. He said there's no way he'd sleep in a bed that Diana had slept in. Can't blame him, I suppose. Well, can't we just jump it on the van with the rest of the stuff and take it to me now? And Diana can sleep on it there if she wants to. It's going to be a bit crowded at your hands, isn't it? Yeah. The sooner I get a place in Chester, the better. Well, come on, grab the other end. Just wanted a word, you know, about the other day. Just to say that, uh, well, I hope it's the last we've seen of George Webb and his mates and 
pencil off for saving me neck. For saving your neck? Whoever's threatening my girlfriend's life, Ron, that's why we walked away from him. Because we weren't brave enough to stand up to him. I thought you did it to protect me. To protect you? Saving your neck never even came into it. I'm sorry I burst in on you like that. It's no problem. Are you feeling any better? I am, yeah. Just needed to get out of my system. Are you sure you're coping? I am, yeah. I'm surprised at myself, actually. I'm doing OK. Good. Good for you. I just got a bit upset when I saw the house being torn apart around me. Not the end of the world, though, is it? It's only a few stupid things in bags and boxes. <laughs> Jackie must have thought I was mad before. I nearly burst out crying in the middle of the shop. Oh, I'm sure she understood. Will you get any time to yourself at Julia's, do you reckon? It'd be a bit difficult, Tracy, staying there as well. Well, I know where you could borrow a tent if you fancy camping out in the woods. I didn't think it'll come to that. Look, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to have to look through some paperwork while we talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Y you should have said you were busy. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. It's just we're setting up a charity event and it takes some organising. Well, thanks for stopping to talk to me. I'd better get over there and give a helping hand. You'd be wondering where I am. Look, you don't have to go straight away. Take your time till you've calmed down. Would you mind if I just wash my face? Yeah, help yourself. I'm burying my head back in this lot. And thanks for, well, being a friend. Anything you need, just ask. You could mind a set of keys for me, if you don't mind. You know, just in case it's an emergency or something. Oh, of course. Great. I'll leave them before I go. The new couple should be moving in Monday. No problem. Said you were looking for me. Yeah, I was. Well, I'll come in then, shall I? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Thanks. I went round to the club early, you know, see if you'd be in there. Thought you'd be busy. It's a wonder you miss me. I'm hardly ever out of there. It'll be opening soon, won't it? Yeah, uh, Christmas, if everything goes according to plan. There'll be a little gold mine when that place opens, won't it? Well, fingers crossed, sir. <laughs> and have all the girls queuing up to go out with the boss. I do not talk about girls at the moment. Why, someone give you the dose of your own dirty medicine? I've been stood up, haven't I? She went from Madrid while she come chasing you. No, she's in advertising. The only reason she stood me up is because she's working late. Now, I worked up with her, have you, you know, to get the club going on the cheap. No, this one's pleasure, not business, Terry. She used to be Patricia Farnham's boss. Well, she's a bit up market, isn't she, for the old Barry Grant? Well, we all know the old Barry Grant sister now, don't we? We both know that. If I can live with my past, I don't have to pretend it never happened. So. Has she got a name, then, this high-flying executive? Yeah, Karen. Karen Clark. I fancy her standing you up, eh? Not that you would have done that to anyone. Well, she'll be back. I hope. Anyway, what did you want me for? Well, money, I suppose, putting it bluntly. Oh, I see. You're looking for a job in a club or something, are you? Oh, as a glass collector. Look, there'll be a few jobs going if you show some money, you know, like uh, behind a bar or something. Me a barman, after the way I've hit the bottle this last year, no thanks. Anyway. I don't want a job. I just want some money. A couple of hundred quid. Maybe three. What is a loan? No, not exactly. And don't ask me what it's for, cos I can't tell you. How soon do you need it? How soon can you get it? Well, as long as it takes me to get to the bank and back. You're not getting leaned on for someone by money, are you, Teddy? Me? No. <whistles> yeah, I'll get it. it. No, it's all right, I'll get it. Hello? W what do you want? Um, no, no, not at the moment. Look, I'll get off the bank, eh? Hang on a minute. I'll uh, leave you to your lady friend, eh? So, uh... Hello. Look at that petrol station, clean as a whistle. You wouldn't believe it was covered in paint and graffiti a few days ago, would you? I'd be glad to see the back of that George Webb. I'll tell you, I was lucky to get away with all that, you know. Still can't believe I let him and his mates suck me in. Um, do you mind if I nip to the post office while we're quiet? It's just uh, I need to raid my savings account. No, of course not. No. 
I'm to pay all the bills, you know, while Jimmy's not here and I'm a bit stressed. Still no word for me. <laughs> the wheel can get messages from space probes millions of miles away and he can't ring me from Birmingham. Tell you what the mood I've been in all week. I'm not looking forward to doing me compare and hit down the Legion tonight. I'm gonna have to force myself to smile. The show must go on their way. The state of you two miseries. No one, there's no customers in the shop. I want to lock him in the back. I want to let him stand here looking morose. Hey, 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 I'm a cheerful once. Jackie was miserable because Jimmy's not been in touch. Well, I hope this misery's not catching. Hey, uh, Jacqueline. Eh, uh, what, Ronaldo? Dee Dee and me are going down the Legion tonight, so if you'd like to come, I'll do you the deal. What deal? Well, if you cheer up, I will. Go on, then, you're on. I could do with a nice house. But I'm not promising I'll be dancing on the tables by the end of the night. See? See, you're sounding happier already, aren't you? I'll put the kettle on. Oh, right. You're still brooding about that petrol bombing business. Can't get it out of my mind, love. You'll be all right. Just take it slowly with Mick and Alice. Do us a favour, will you, Dee? Next time you see me doing something stupid, just dip me across the back of the head with a big brick, will you? Look forward to it. Oh, by the way, uh, by the way, I've had a Jackie Corkle about the Legion tonight. All right, we're going. Well, seeing how she's so miserable, you know, I've asked her to come along for a night out. Well, that'll be a great night for her. You're comparing all night. Will she be able to sit with you? I'm not going tonight. Why not? I'm dressing the crib at the church. What was I doing not being there this year? Oh, no, forgot about that. What can I tell her now? I'll just explain it to her. See, you'll be comparing most of the night. You'll sit with her when you can. Three hundred quid would have been enough. You're not developing an expensive kind of habit, are you, sir? Just living. These are real, aren't they? Straight from the bank. And they're not robbed. Is there going to be enough for what you need there? Yeah, there's plenty. What is the money for, Teddy? It's just something to do with Christmas. So you're not going to tell me, are you? So I might as well get off. Barry. Thanks for the cash. You know the score, sir. You can have what you like off me. So if you ever need looking after again, just give us the nod. I appreciate it. Well, I owe you, mate, don't I? I owe you a lot. So if you ever need that, just ask. Oh, that was a long walk. I had to move the shops to Manchester. Oh, it took a while to clean my head. Was it clear now? Totally, yeah. I feel much better. Are you going already? I'm finished, yeah. There's been no stopping me. The moment the room came empty, I just mopped it. Be ready for the off in a minute. Oh, I've bought some biscuits for everybody. Oh, well, never mind. We'll have them later. Thanks for everything. You've been a star. <laughs> well, you still get a little twinkle from a wrinkly every now and then, you know. <laughs> hey, listen, we'll have to be getting off in a minute. You I'm know. ready. Oh, will you wait till I do one last check? I'm going to have to go, OK? Thanks for the coffee. Thanks for dropping by. I like nice surprises. Oh, listen, though, what do you want for Christmas? I don't know, something different. Oh, dear. We'll go shopping together. You can choose. Hiya. All right. Hiya. Hey, I just wanted to make sure you weren't expecting any more trouble from the petrol station manager. George Webb. Now I uh, think he's crawled back under his stamp. Good, cos I got Max to have a word with the petrol company, get them to have a word with him, move him on, you know. You got Max to get rid of him? Yeah, well, you'd like to look after our long-standing tenants, you know. I see, all right. Right. Well, uh, whatever he's uh, moved on, I suppose. Right, well, let me know if you have any follow up then, all right? Sit down. Cheers, see ya. So, um, when are you going to take me to Santa's Grotto then? How about Saturday? Who's crawled back under a stone? I'm a bit too big to sit on Santa's knee now. Ellis. Maybe I could pretend to be Santa and you could sit on my knee. I've got a lovely present for you. Ellis, who's crawled back under a stone? George Webb. The local neighbourhood neo-Nazi. So did you finally get the police onto him, like I said? Well, um, well, not exactly, no. Uh, but his company's moved him on now, so we don't need to worry about him anymore. I don't believe it. Why didn't you give the police a chance to nail him? What would the police have done anyway? It wasn't long ago they had Mick banged up for 24 hours for being an illegal immigrant. Well, that's no argument. I don't want to argue. Webb's history now. Forget about him. 
I can't believe it. Give me one really good reason why you didn't hand him over to the police. Because he threatened to hurt someone I love very much. Meaning Mick and the kids? Meaning you. He threatened you. If we had gone to the police, he was going to get you. We had no choice. So now he just goes off and makes someone else's life a misery? Yeah, I know that. All I've done is shifted the problem, but I've done it now. But even if we'd gone to the police, we'd have been struggling to prove he was the one behind the petrol bomb attacks. Especially in court. I'm the target now, eh? Oh, no, no, no. I think he's finished with us. And I'm just happy that you, Mick, and the kids are safe. But like you say, all we've done is move Webb and his mates onto someone else. And I don't feel good about that. Everything's on the van now, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks for your help. This used to be my room. Oh, I loved it when I was a teenager. Painted it black once. Look in. These are my keys. They're the same as the ones my dad gave me. You know, like when I was old enough and that. Um, if the new people change the locks or they don't want them or anything, do you know who could have them? Just for me, mum and dad's memory's sake and that, really. I know it sounds stupid, but I think I'm going to miss this place. I'd be glad to see the back of it, to be honest. Too many memories of me and Rod left here now. They're not all good ones. I Rod thought the world of you, you know. This would have broke his heart. Couldn't have thought that much of me, though, could he? Why? Because he left you for thinking you were having an affair with Peter Harrison. He never even gave me a chance. I can't blame him for everything. I mean, even after Rod had left, he still went into that bedroom with Peter. <laughs> Could you get your pension from the post office, then? Ron, I know you think I'm some kind of goddess, but there's no need to go down on your knees for me. Nah, I dropped this bag of sugar on the floor, didn't I? It's gone all over the place. Hey, listen, while I think on, do you want the good news or the bad news? You choose. Well, I'm still comparing down the Legion tonight. That sounds like the bad news. Cheek. No, I'm afraid the bad news is Dee Dee can't make it, so you're going to be sat by yourself for part of the night. Well, if Dee Dee's not going to be there, maybe it's best if I don't go, eh? Oh, why not? Come on, Jack. Give you the world a good to have a night out, won't it? Yeah, but I just don't think it seems 100% right, you know, <laughs> going out for the night with a married man. What do you mean, I'm your boss, aren't I? We're together all day in the shop. I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Oh, well, that's a shame. I was looking forward to your company. Going to be all on my own now. <laughs> In the Legion. Well, how about one night next week, then? When Dee Dee's there? Yeah. Maybe that'd be better. Oh, you can buy me a beer to drink, then? All right. When's the big day, then? Monday. Hmm. Well, let's settle, then. I'll get you down the Legion one night next week, and i tell you what, I'll even bring Dee Dee along as a chaperone. How's that? <laughs> I don't know whether I should take this bed. It's a good bed. I never don't need a double bed anymore. Might as well just give it to Rod, since he won't share it with me anymore. Well, to be honest, Rod just said he wanted it dumped. Oh, does he? Well, that's very supportive of him. God, I'm just sick and tired of hearing about what Rod's got to say about all this. In fact, I'm sick of hearing about Rod full stop. You can always use a single bed in my spare room. It's quite comfy. Oh, look, can we just get off? I've got to have the van back and I'm on work tonight. Leave it. What? I said, just leave it. My wonderful husband can come and sort it out for himself. It's about time he showed his face round here and did something. Look at her, I think we've had plenty of how you feel about our Rod. Oh, here we go. Our Rod now, is he? Have you forgotten, Tracy? It wasn't him who was raped. No, no, love, don't be getting upset. Yeah, and it wasn't him who went into a bedroom with someone else behind his wife's back, was he? Thanks a lot, Tracy. Look, I'm sure our Tracy didn't mean anything, did you, love? 
Come on, let's all get round to mine and have a nice copper. No, you go. You're all family, not mine. Look, what are we going to do about this thing? Just leave it. Just get off, Tom. Thanks for your help. I'll come and get my stuff as soon as I sort myself out. What are you talking about? You're supposed to be coming round to ours. Stay with me. No. Look, it wouldn't work. We just all end up falling out over this. I'll sort myself out. Look, Diana, no woman deserves to get raped, but... Well, it was a stupid thing to do in the first place, wasn't it? And as I said, I'll look after myself from now on. But look, what are we going to do about this thing? I mean, we've left the house spotless. We can't need this standing in the clothes, messing the place up. I'll get the mattress in on my own. Don't worry. Julia, come on, just leave it. Diana's doing what she wants to do. Are you sure you'll be all right, love? I'll manage her. Are you on your own? I can manage. You'll never get it all the way in like that. I'm more on my own. Are you sure? Look, I thought I was some scum of the earth you had since when you're talking to. Look, I'm sorry. I can't just stand by and watch you struggle on your own like this. I'm OK. Will you let me help? Please. Don't you think we should go back and see if she's all right? Man, she'll be better off on her own. Where's she going to sleep tonight? Oh, don't worry, she'll sort something out. Do you know, I love watching books out on living. The reason being that I get a chance to see Barry Grant, who I always used to fancy. Anyway, you can see more from Barry and the rest of the gang tomorrow in Brookside, the same time here on Living. But now it's time for our Watch to Win competition. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, of course you do. You could win a £100 voucher to spend on the high street. All you have to do is watch the programmes each hour, and then I give you the question at the end of each programme. So, did you watch Brookside? I'm sure you did. What did Diane buy at the shop? What did Diane buy at the shop? All you have to do is phone us on 0870 900 8687. You can only phone. You can't email, by the way. And please note, it's not our usual living live phone number. It is 0870 900 867. So please phone us. Give us the answer. You might want one of those vouchers. And This wallpaper goes, or I do. There's nothing wrong with it. No, no, no. It says in my newspaper. Oscar Wilde's last words. Really? Yeah. Spoken 92 years ago today. Oh, what a man of useless information you are. Bye. 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 Oh, listen. Don't forget. Um, I'm collecting for the round table later. Oh, in full costume, I presume. Of course. As chairman of the round table, I now have the honour of being Father Christmas. You know, I get the feeling you quite enjoy all this dressing up. It's for charity. An elf last year, Father Christmas this. Wouldn't be surprised if I discovered you parading round the bedroom in my best cocktail dress and slingbacks. That was silly. Oh, Danny, I wouldn't mind, honestly. A lot of straight men are very tender by cross-dressing. Well, in that case, then, I should try on your flame-proof nighty. See if that will do anything for me. I'll hold you for that.
Excuse me. I'm sorry, I thought you'd gone. I saw the light on and... Have you been here all night? Why? I had nowhere else to go. But I thought you said you were staying at Julia's. I was supposed to be. I had a problem with that, Tracy. She blamed me for everything that's happened. What about your dad? I can't go to him. He still doesn't know anything's wrong. Have you got any other relatives? An auntie and scam. I haven't seen her for years. Well, you can't stay here by yourself. It was a horrible here last night. The place was just dead. So there's been so many people on the couch in the extension. When are the new people moving in? It's the from today, officially. That's so many time. Haven't you got any friends you could stay with? I suppose so, yeah. What do I say to them? I, uh, sorry I haven't been in touch for a while, but I've been raped and my husband's left me and I was wondering whether I could stay a few nights. Yeah, take your point. You know the worst thing about last night? It was knowing that he was next door, tucked up in his cosy little bed. God, I liked him. I trusted him. I'm not going to ever trust anyone again. You will. It'll just take time. Look, why don't you come over to our place for a few days? Oh, I couldn't. You've already done enough for me. Just until you get yourself together. I'm not being ungrateful. That's where it happens. What would people say? <laughs> Who cares what people say? It's if you can cope, that's what matters. Are you absolutely sure? Look. You go and get yourself together. I'll get a room sorted out for you. Thanks. Thanks, love. I'm really gonna strangle Jimmy when I see him. My birthday. Not even a card or a phone call. Ah, oh, well, something might turn up in the second post. <laughs> and pigs might fly. Yeah. Things could be worse, you know. How would you like to be one of these bald potatoes spending a birthday in this shop? What are you on about? It's just been on the radio. Tomorrow is the official birthday of the British potato. How can a potato have a birthday? Anyway, I'm spending my birthday stuck in this shop. Ah, oh, and there's me thinking that you were enjoying your work. Oh, don't get me wrong, I do. It's just Jimmy. I knew I shouldn't let him go to Birmingham for Barry Grant. See, the thing about Jimmy is he, he's easily led, you know. He'll be at Barry's every beck and call now, you mark my words. Yeah, well... Maybe this will cheer you up. Happy bit. Oh. Um, just these, please. I'm glad you come in. Oh, so am I now. It's nice to feel wanted. Ah, oh. um, any chance of an appointment to your place tonight if you like treating yourself? Sure. Um, five o'clock suit you. Any chance of getting off early, Ron? How can I refuse the birthday girl? Oh, happy birthday! And make sure you get the special treatment. Ah, oh, that'll make a nice change. <laughs> See you later. See ya. Right, this is it. Hiya. Hi, you love, all right? Hi, dear, how's things? Fine, thanks. I'm not stopping. I just popped in to give you this. Happy birthday. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, hey, dead posh paper and everything. Seems a shame to rip it. That's from both of us. Didn't think Mum would have remembered. Oh, oh, it's Gorgeous. Ah, oh, thanks very much. I thought it might be handy. You know, a cold it gets in here with that door opening and closing every five minutes. Do you know, I was only thinking to myself the other day how badly off I am for jumpers. I've still got the receipt if it doesn't fit. No, I'm sure it'll be fine, honest. Thanks very much, both of you. Right, well, go get me bus. You're still set for the Legion tonight. A beer to drink? I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> See you later. Ta-ra, sure. love. Thanks, Tim. And, er... Uh... Well, it's a little gift off me, you know. Happy birthday. Oh, well, I thought this was from both of you. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's from, like, me and Dee Dee, innit, your mates, you know, but, well, that's a little gift off your employer, me. Ron! What's up? What's up? Don't you like it? Uh, do you know how much this stuff costs? Of course I know how much it costs. I bought it, didn't I? <laughs> well, you should now. You deserve it. Oh. I tell you, this shop wouldn't be the same without you. Oh, well, I'll wear it for the Legion tonight. Oh, smell that. It's beautiful. Mm. Look, Jack, uh, I know this might sound a bit odd, but, well, 
I think it'd be better if you didn't mention this to Dee Dee, you know, in case she gets the wrong idea, like. Why should she? Well, not, but, you know, funny women can be, don't you? <laughs> Is that to rush off to Wiggins, the cafe office, pick up some stuff for collective bars? Mmm, he's in demand, isn't he? How are you? Fine, thanks. Apart from splitting out. Shouldn't you be at work? Oh, no, I've got some time off. They've gone skiing with Mummy and Daddy. Mmm. And so you come to visit your fella and you end up stuck here all day on your tart? I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. <laughs> don't mind, but we work wordless each other as it is these days. Ooh, I'd hate to be young nowadays, what with AIDS on the ozone layer. I brought you some decorations in. I thought it cheered the place up. That is for charity, after all. Oh, good. It'll give me something to do. Surprise him when he gets back. I'm not bothered about Christmas this year. It's a shame, really, because the odds are greater on it being my last. Don't be daft. You're only young. I know. <laughs> We'd be surprised, though. I'm not as young as I look. So why aren't you bothering with Christmas, then? Oh, it wouldn't be right with all my problems. You all right? No, but I won't burden you with all my troubles. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, I think it's all down to stress, you know. It takes a lot out of you being a career woman. Yeah, I suppose it does. Who's there? Rod, is that you? Boom! Oh, God, Jimmy! <laughs> Timed that well, didn't I? Removal men take long. Not. Sorry, Jimmy, why are you here? Well, I couldn't get in arse, could I? I forgot my key, you know what I mean? So, I was just on my way round to Dick O's shop, you know, to see Jackie and Nan. I thought to myself, no, hang on, hang on. Who is not a stone's throw away from here, but my favourite nephew and his gorgeous missus. Ah. Anyway, where's your new place? I hope it's not too far away. I'll tell you something. I'm surprised you sold this place so quick. I've only been away a few weeks, haven't I? Oh, God, coming back to pick you up, is he? Hello? Diana? Is anybody there? It's Patricia. Oh, hi. Friendly neighbour, come to say to there. Ready when you are, please. Hi, right, love. Hi. So, what do you reckon to this one, then, eh, Pat? Going all posh and leaving us behind? Sorry? I'm not moving to another house, Jimmy. Why not? It's a long story. Well, where are you going, then? I'm just staying with Patricia's for a few nights. Oh, cool. Well, what about our Rod? I don't know, and I don't care. What are you on about? Rod's left me. We've split up. You've what? When was all this? I'm sorry, I just don't want to talk about it. Shall we go? Hey, come on, hang on, hang on. Like, we can't just leave it like that. Don't, uh, don't come and stay with us. Jackie won't mind. I can't. He probably ends up blaming me as well. Blaming for what? Hey! What's going on? I'm gonna go after her. I'll change, he said. I'll make it up to you. So, don't know who's the biggest fool. Him for thinking he could change or me for believing him. Jackie, don't let him get to you like this. Wait till the Legion tonight. You can drown your sorrows then. I even gave him the number of the shop. He's absolutely got no excuse. Yeah, but he might have lost it, mightn't he? Yeah, well, looks like he'll be losing me. I can't be bothered with all this messing about, Ron. I just want a quiet life. I've just seen Diana. What's happened? Where have you been, Jimmy? Birmingham. Don't try and be funny with me. I'm not. Why didn't you phone? I did. I tried a few times. It was always engaged. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. 
And what about all the letters you promised? Oh, Jackie, you know what I like with letters. Then why promise in the first place? Kid, you wouldn't believe how busy we've been. Too busy to drop me a postcard. Too busy to let me know you're still alive. All right, all right. I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, so am I. Oh, don't be like this. Like what? Mad because my husband goes off for a month and doesn't even bother getting in touch with me. I tried. You must think I'm cracked. One more chance, I said. Well, you've blown it. Oh, don't say that. Just go. Uh, excuse me, could you just keep the volume down a touch, please? Hey, hey. Didn't know you were branching out into cosmetics, Ronnie. What? It's mine. Who's been buying you posh perfume while I've been away? I bought it myself. A little treat for my birthday. Today. If that's all right with you. OK, I'm sorry, I completely forgot. It's too late for apologies. Just leave. Hey, listen, tell you what. Let's go out tonight. I'll make it up to you. I'm going the Legion with Ron and Dee Dee. Yeah, well, it's all right. I can meet you there when you finish. Don't bother. Um, can I just move to the toilet? Aye, aye. So this is what's become of my ex-gold mine. Look what the wind's blown in. Mm, nice to see you and all, Julia. Hey, uh, can I have a word? There's only one word I like to say to you, Jimmy Corkill, and that's... Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, very funny. I'm being serious. It's about our rod and die. What about them? Well, what's all this about them splitting up? And what's Diana playing at? Moving in with that Patricia Farnham one? Yes, I've heard. I thought she'd gone back to her dad. I've just seen her. She looks terrible. What's going on? Come over here. There was an incident. What do you mean, an incident? Diana was, um... Someone forced himself upon her. You what? You know, she was... Only I, Rod, doesn't believe her. He thinks she just made it all up. Hang on, hang on. You've lost me now. Why would you want to make up something like that? Because she knew the fella and she went upstairs with him at a party. Our Rod thinks she just panicked afterwards out of guilt. Who was it? That's the worst bit. You know the deputy headmistress at number nine? Not John Harrison? No. His son. You what? That smarmy looking get who used to have a flick. That's him. She's taken him to court and everything. It's been awful. I don't believe I'm here in this. Where's our rod anyway? He's working away and all. He won't have anything to do with her. Oh, God. I wish it stayed in Birmingham now. And keep that button, Jimmy Corkill. What's all that about? Nothing for you to worry about, love. How are you feeling? Well, I'll put the water on if you like, and you could have a bath on an early night. Oh, that sounds great. You'll be in Thomas's room. Just make yourself at home. And listen, if you want anything, just help yourself. Don't feel you have to ask. Uh, he's had his bath. Shall I just put him straight into his pyjamas? May as well. Anna's volunteered to share with the monster over a few nights. Thanks, Anna. Well, I'd better go up. I don't want him catching cold. Oh, I'll get that. Diana, could you finish making the coffee? Margaret! Hello. Yeah. Come through, we're in the kitchen. It's just a fly in, is it? All right, you're not working today? Um, no, I'm on sick leave. Oh. How are you? Oh, I'm bored. Derek's had to go to Wigan, so I've been minding the shop all day. <laughs> Julia Brogan in and out, driving me mad. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean. Oh, sorry, I know what she's like. Um, how do you make this coffee? I'm only used to instant. It's all right. You sit yourself down, I'll finish it. Dan, I'm staying with us for a few days. Oh, all right. Why aren't you in work? Oh, I've got some time off. They've gone to Austria skiing. Two weeks of freedom. <laughs> How's everything with you? Oh, rushed off my feet. The fashion show's a week on Friday. Oh, yeah, did you manage to find a celebrity? Yes. Sarah Green. Joking. <laughs> Just hope everything's ready in time. It's been hectic. Hell getting it all together. I've been up to my eyes. Well, if you want anything doing, I mean, I'll give you a hand. Derek's always busy with Cafford, so there's not much for me to do. Really? Mm, yeah, it'd be brilliant. It'd be better than being stuck in the shop all day with a lot of old codgers. 
Well, it would be great. There's loads of phoning round you can do and other odd bits. Oh, well, just tell me when. When I get to meet Sarah Green. <laughs> of course. I'll have to get a film from the camera. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. See you later. Jackie. Give me these. Kissing on the dice. Oh, don't like that. Go on, take them. It's with the city. Thought you packed up. Um, I am. Uh, it's just the odd one, you know. Well, I've had a stressful day. Julia told me about our rotten day. Can't believe it. I'll have to go. I should have been in here for five. Hey, listen. I did phone, you know. OK, all right. I know I should have tried a bit more often, but it was usually the early hours by the time we finished in the club. Didn't want to get you out of bed. I really missed you, you know. Oh, look, come out with us tonight. We're going to town. I've told you. I'm going the Legion with Ron and Dee Dee. You don't want to be spending your birthday in there. <laughs> How would you know? You know you'd have a better time with me. Come on, I've got a few bob. I'll treat you to a decent restaurant club in town. <laughs> Listen to Mr Big Shot here. Spent a few weeks working for Barry Grant, have you? It's not like that. I'm not taken in by your big talk anymore. It doesn't impress me. And I'm certainly not interested in your dodgy money. It's not dodgy. I'm not soft, Jimmy. Look, I haven't been up to any funny business, if that's what you mean. This is all dead legit. If I had a fiver for every time I've heard you say that. Come on, Driving licence. Seen the name? James Corkill. I went on a crash course. Barry paid for it. He wants it all to be above board. Makes a change. I thought you'd be impressed. Hello, stranger. All right. You go to the Legion tonight? I don't think it's quite my style. You'll have a laugh. It's audition night and bingo as well. All right. Sounds great. Well, we'll see you in there. You know where we're going to be, don't you? Oh, yes, dear. I'm looking forward to it. See ya. Have you got an appointment? Why else would I be here? Right, sit down. We'll be with you in a moment. Coffee whilst you're waiting. Sorry. Have you got an appointment? Do I look the sort you'd want a pair? I'll just want a minute with Jackie. Make sure that's all it is. Thank God she was never a traffic warden. Oh, I. At least I can still make you smile. I'm not speaking again. Pardon? Those two. All oh, right. I bet you don't have to put the likes of them in your chest to sell on, do you? <laughs> so, I suppose you'll be able to get rid of this place then now. Uh... No, not at all. I've decided to keep it. I'm just expanding my little empire further. <gasps> Does that mean I get to keep my job? Well, I suppose so. Oh. I'll be looking for a new manager, though. Tracy's settled in really well in Chester and I'll need to move around a bit. Well, look no further. I'm your ideal woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tracy's even thinking of looking for a flat there. I know. She loves it. Well, she's doing a great job. I'm glad you two are getting on so well. You make a lovely couple. Mm, thanks. And I'm glad we got over our little misunderstanding. You know, and I thought you were... Uh, <laughs> Not that I've got anything against them, like, but it just seems that all the nicest fellas turn out to be the married or that way declined. Or well, both. Come out with us tonight. At least, let me make it up to you. Promise, Ron and Dee Dee, I'm going the Legion and I'm going without you. Well, can't you change your mind? I like to keep my promises. We've got to try and do something about her, Diana. You know, she shouldn't be at the finals. I know. She's a core kill now, isn't she? She should be with us. The core kill kiss. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I've just been collecting for the round table. Oh, very nice. Just yell if you want anything, Diana. 
<laughs> Does a little boy called Thomas Farnham live here? Sorry, he's in bed. Can I tell him who called? No, I asked you to keep him awake. You didn't. I... Well, you might as well keep that friend, then. <laughs> I thought I heard something on the roof. Do you know, I reckon we made about a crown tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Um, I said Diana could stay here for a few nights. She had nowhere else to go. It's only till I sort myself out. Yes, right. I really appreciate it. Sorry, where did you say the hairdryer was? I put it on your bed. It won't be a minute. Patricia, can I just... Uh, word. What on earth is she doing here? I had to offer. She was really stuck. Yeah, but she can't stay here. Why not? Because when the court case comes up, I'll be called as a witness. So? Well, it might be construed as taking sides. It's probably illegal. Now she'll have to go. And I thought Father Christmas was supposed to be charitable and caring. This is serious, Patricia. I'm being serious. Diana needs our help. Anyway, I don't really see what the problem is. After all, we're all on the same side. Aren't we? Brookie, back tomorrow at the same time, but I hope you're watching that episode particularly carefully because there could be a £100 shopping voucher for High Street stores in it for you. I'll be asking the question about today's Brookside after the break, so don't go away. At that point, I will also give you the special competition phone number. It's different from our usual numbers, so make sure you have a pen and paper handy to write it down. Now, I don't think the day will be complete without a little bit of showbiz stuff and particularly a little bit of Catherine Zeta-Jones stuff. She's kind of been omnipresent recently, hasn't she? But the newspapers are reporting that James Bond film chiefs want her as their first female 00 secret agent. Apparently she's already done a screen test. They say she's feisty, independent and very beautiful. A deadly combination for a glamorous spy. Schedule permitting, she is our girl. How about that? Actually, that one, uh, the new... Dom. Yeah, OK, all right, I know I'm late. Nice flowers, Jimmy, but an apology would have done. <laughs> For Jackie. She's got a cob on. We got a birthday. I'll sort the domestics out on your own time. All right, Jimmy. Now, listen, there's a spark in there. He's fixing the uh, bar sign above the bar, right? I want you to keep an eye on him and make sure he fixes that dodgy spotlight before he gets off. Okay. Hey, Terry. Uh, hey, I'll see you in a minute down there, all right? Listen, uh, I'm just off for a spot of lunch. I wondered if you'd like to join me. Oh, I remember the days when you used to call it dinner. Um, I've got to get off. He's just going to fill up and then I'm away. Oh, yeah. Anywhere interesting? Maybe. Wouldn't have anything to do with the 500 quid you got off me last week, would it? It could be, but you don't want to know about my social calendar, do you? Not now that you're trying to be the next drink fellow. He needs something to occupy him. Mm -hmm. well, should have seen the state of him when you were in Spain. At least he's not throwing his money away on the ale these days. That's something. Yeah, well, he must be up to something soft, or he wouldn't be acting this cagey. Hey. Okay. Maybe he's playing the GGs. Or maybe he's got himself a bit of scare tucked away, know what I mean? I yeah. Think. Well, ten to one, whatever it is, he'll be on the losing side. Listen, forget about the electrician. I want you to keep your eye on him and tell me where he goes. Well, you mean follow him? Well, I had you for security, didn't I? Well, listen, if you have a problem with that, just imagine Anne Morse. Ours not a reason why, eh, Lewis? Yeah, right, I don't care. Nice day for the run, anyway. Well, listen, Jimmy. If there's one scratch on that car, if you smoke one cigarette... Yeah, here, all right, I know, you'll bust me back to the ranks. Yeah, the ranks are the unemployed, as far as you're concerned, right? All right, ten four. Right, get on with it or you'll miss him. Hey, Jack! Hey, you've got time for me now, Mr Biggs, finish giving you your orders for the day. Oh, come on, behave, kid. Hi, yeah, look, taking time off to get you these. Oh, very nice. Shouldn't it be diamonds, then? You know, now you're in club land, a big shot in the underworld. I keep telling you, the new club scene's not like that, is it? Listen, kid, I've got to get off. Oh, careful. You nearly spent some time with me, there. Look, I've said I'm sorry about your birthday and that, haven't I? And anyway, I'm going to make it up to you Friday, OK? And I promise I'll spoil you rotten. 
Here we go. First it's flowers, then a three-course meal job. Hey, listen, fish, chips and peas. OK. Now, look, I'll take you somewhere decent, OK? Here. There. I love you. I saw you passing on us, doing a coffee for a client. Brian likes us to come on clients and not customers. Yeah. That's the tone, doesn't it? Well, listen, Julia, sorry and that, you know what I mean, but uh, I've got a bit of urgent business, all right? Oh, well, I won't keep you. It's just with our Rod and Diana still not speaking. You know, they've got themselves in the right state. Yeah, it's a shame they can't get it together, isn't it? But uh, what can you do, eh? It breaks my heart when I think about that Peter House and all this business coming between such a lovely couple. And neither of them will climb down, you see. So I thought, if you could have a word with Diana, you know, get her to get in touch with her, Art. Yeah, right, OK. You will? Yeah, fine, but look, I've got to get off, OK? Are you getting off or what? I'm just going, boss. Cheers. So I'll tell Diana then that you'll call into the finance to see her. Yeah, OK, I'll see what I can do. Thanks. Oh. I always said his heart was sometimes in the right place, but I caught him. Why do I think I'd have been better sending Malcolm the Mountie? Sorry? Just a little lad and I'm sending Jimmy on. Anyway, what are you doing round here? The, uh, it's no problem, my little empire, is there? No, just the odd plumbing crisis with the hair salon. I've just been round to see Sinbad, uh, ready to get somebody to come over. Oh, well, whatever, you're hard to site manager after all. Mm. Uh, glad we got our little problem over the road cleared up as well. Ah, you mean our friendly neighbourhood racist, Mr George Webb. What? Well, just followed your advice, telephoned the petrol company, told them that if they didn't get him out, we'd have to renegotiate their contract. There's a temporary manager in there till they find a replacement. They are. Told you, didn't I, Max? Just a phone call, a word in the right ear. I mean, you've got weight, haven't you? So why not use it? Uh, so all the rest of my tenants are happy, then, are they? Yes, give or take the odd grumble or leaky guttering. Listen, I must meet you for lunch sometime, get you to sanction some of the larger maintenance costs. I will say when, but uh, I can't do it today and the rest of this week's out, really, cos I want to stick around here. There's uh, someone I've got to see. Somebody I might know? Well, give uh, Karen my regards. I wondered why you were taking so much interest in this charity fashion show. Public spirited, that's me, Max. Anyway, I'll see you sometime, all right? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Patricia sounds like I've done a few things through the machine. Well, I was going to wash these things of Thomas's. Yes, well, I'm sure they'll all fit in together. Oh, I don't want to be any trouble. You're not. Coffee and a sandwich, anyone? <sighs> Hello, darling. Hello, love. Mm. Sorting out a problem at the shop, so I just thought I'd come back for lunch. Oh, well, I'm afraid lunch won't be anything very exotic, not with a fashion show coming up. I was just going to grab a sandwich. I could make something if you like. Or I could make omelettes. Oh, how about I do my world-famous mushrooms on toast? Excellent solution. Good. I've got an hour or so before I go back. Ah. I could go and get some bread. Oh, hang on, I'll give you some money. No, I'd rather, honestly. You've been good enough as it is. In fact, I've been thinking, I haven't really got enough money to pay me way round here. Maybe you should start looking for somewhere else to stay. Wouldn't hear of it, would we, Max? No. Not when you've nowhere else to go with the court case coming up. You need all the support you can get. Thanks. But at least let me pay for a loaf. My bag's upstairs. Mushrooms on toast do all right for you, Anna. Oh. Uh, no, I'm not very hungry, actually. And I've got some letters I want to post. But you don't want anything to eat at all? No, really. And, um... I'll move some more of Thomas's things into my room, shall I, if Diana's going to be staying much longer? Look, Anna, I know you don't like having to share your room with Thomas, but we've all had our space invaded. I'd hoped that under the circumstances yes, you might... Yes, but it won't be for much longer. Will it, Patricia? It'll be for as long as Diana needs it, after all. We don't want to make her a victim of homelessness as well as rape, do we? Did you mean this one or this one? Mm. I'll wash them both and we can decide which you should wear tomorrow. This thing tomorrow is just to put in a plea and fix a date for the case. Yes, I know, but you want to look tidy. True. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this. You'll be late for school and uh, you look tired. Yes, well... I can't deny your dad and I have had a few sleepless nights since all this began. Yeah. I'm sorry about it all rebounding on you, too. It's not as if you're guilty, is it? No. A lot of rape, anyway. But dad was probably right. I should have had more sense than being in that bedroom with her in the first place. Not the brightest thing you ever did. It was stupid. But what matters now is that you don't end up paying too heavy a price for it. And I don't mean financially. I mean, it was that too, isn't there? 
Barristers don't come cheap, do they? Seeing as I'm not eligible for legal aid. Well, we'll just have to find the money, that's all. Your dad said he might pop in and see the bank manager while he's out. See about the possibility of us borrowing if we need to. No way. I'm not letting you and dad go into debt. I'm working. I might be able to borrow some. Yeah, well, we'll see. Anyway, I hope to get costs when they find me innocent. You get that. I'll leave you to put these in the machine. And if you could just get them out as soon as they're finished, and then they won't take too much ironing. Oh, hi, Anna. Come in. I hope you don't mind. It's just I was getting so angry. Hello, Anna. Hello. Uh, it's just I thought I ought to let you know, if you don't already, that Diana has moved in with Mr and Mrs Farnham. She's moved in? How come? Well, it seems she had some sort of argument with um, her husband's sister. Oh, Tracy. And so she didn't want to go and live at uh, Julia's with her. Patricia says she has nowhere else to go. But it's in their house Diana's claiming the whole thing happened. And now the Farnhams have taken her in. How's it going to look? It's going to look as if they believe her. That they're on her side, just like everybody else. Not everyone. See my brother here? Works his middle name. But fear not, Cinderella. Me and the fairy godmother here have come to take you away from all this. Oh, uh, you couldn't turn the rent and mortgage into a pumpkin while you're at it, could you? No, but you could forget they exist for a while and come out for a meal with us tonight. Treat yourself, sir. After all the hassle we've had lately, uh, I thought we could go to that bistro. Drink a toast to absent racists. Now, we've got web off our backs, but we'll still up to our next debt wise. Look, thanks for asking, but I can't take a night off when we need every penny we're making here. No, no, no. Mike can do your shift tonight and I'll do his tomorrow. Oh, come on. We haven't had a chance to celebrate the engagement yet, have we? You know what they say, two's company. And three's a party. Oh, what would you say about Marianne refusing to marry me on account of you, huh? Well, she might do if uh, she thought she was going to get a really boring brother-in-law. Isn't that right? I don't know about that, but it would be nice if you came. Yeah, why not? Be good to get out, I suppose. See? I told you to give up if you attacked in twos. What a team. Sorry to disturb you, love. Thought I'd just pop over and say how Diana was. Good there, is she? Yes. Come in. Mmm. You got it very nice here. Thanks. I was just about to start supper. Max will be home soon. But if you'd like a cup of tea or... Oh, you're all right, thanks, love. Won't be stopping long. Mm. Although Jimmy and Jackie call, kill might. They said they'll pop over and see how she is later. We can all have a good jangle then, eh? Right, um, 
Well, I'll go and get dye. So what are you gonna have there? Anything as long as it's not pizza. Mm. Looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, and the wine's on me. No, I'll stick with the lager, please. It's your sense of occasion. We've come to celebrate fixing a date for the nuptials. Oh, right. So uh, when's it gonna be then? February. The 14th. Well, it's Valentine's Day, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> I said it was a bit corny, but... Well, so it's Corn Incorporated, but it goes with how I feel. And it gives you lots of time to write a best man speech. I want you to say what a great brother I am, and how you're not losing a brother, but you're gaining a sister. Just, um, get into the registry office on time, eh? Yeah, I'll do the best. Well, you better add. You've got a big part to play in this winning of ours, hasn't it? I take it they don't know you're over here consulting with the enemy? No, I just said I was going out. Patricia was too busy condemning you to ask where. They all were. I wanted so much to say something, you know, defend you. Well, I suppose it's more important you're willing to stand up for me in court. Of course I will. I told your solicitor what's happening isn't right. Diana was the one who led you into that bedroom. Then I think... Well, then I think she was ashamed and... So she said you forced her. Yeah. Can't be easy for you, though, swimming against the tide. Swimming? Oh, yeah, when just about everyone else thinks I'm guilty. But I don't. No. Look, why don't we forget the coffee and go for a drink? Unless you mind being seen out with public enemy number one. No, a drink would be nice. Great. Just going in the pub, Mum. Won't be long. But your dad's gone for a takeaway. Well, I'll, I'll stick it in the microwave when I get back. Just get a jacket. I'm not sure he should be seen out enjoying himself, especially when he's being caught tomorrow. But if he hides himself away, people might think it's from guilt. Right. Ready, then? Now, you won't be late, will you? You've got tomorrow to think about. Mum, we've been through this. Tomorrow, they just read out the charge. I tell them I'm not guilty, and that's all. It's what happens after that I'm worried about. Then you should relax while you can. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll be late. Jackie brought them for me, lovely auntie. Yeah. Couldn't have picked better myself. Right, well, you'll have to excuse me. Max is due home and we usually eat when he gets back. Don't you mind us, love. You see to his meal. Having the tea on the table is the best way of hanging on to a husband, I always say. Oh. Tact, Julia. It's in the dictionary between tacky and twist. Well, Diana knows I didn't mean it. Listen, it's not easy for me, you know. I'm piggy in the middle here, with Rod being my grandson. So, he's my nephew and all, isn't he? Which is all the more reason why I should go over the road and sort that Peter out of someone else. Hey, you do, Jimmy Corkill, and you and me a history, I'm telling you. I might have known. It's support the girl needs, not the Corkills round and throwing the fists about. Hey, you. It was you that asked me to come, remember? Stop it, all of you! I'll go and see if she's all right. Well, this is nice. Well, I'll just, uh, pop to the little boy's room. If the bride-to-be will excuse me. <laughs> he never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, full of surprises, eh? No, but... Well, would you have said he was the sort to get carried away by wedding arrangements? Well, not until he met you, no. And I wanted to thank you. Ellis not going berserk when all this racist stuff was going on was down to you. Being a calm and influence and all that. So, you do approve then? Yeah, sure. Look, I think that you're the best thing that's happened to. But you don't need my approval, do you? No. Well, just be nice to know that you like the idea. I just think that he's very lucky to have someone like you in his life. And, um, what about the women in your life? <laughs> well, there's my little Gemma. <laughs> and I wanted to thank you for letting them stay at your place. It was a big help knowing that they were safe when that racist web was still hanging around. It's OK. They're great kids. But that's you, the dad. What about you, the man? And don't tell me you're one of those people who doesn't need some romance in their life. I wasn't going to. What have I missed? We were just talking about romance. 
or in my case, a lack of it. What you need is for the right woman to come along. Hey. Yeah. Jimmy. Hmm? Oh, come on, what are we doing? We're hanging around here waiting for her to come down or what? Much else, it me. Julia wanted me to persuade her to try and get in touch with our lodge, you know. No, she won't. Says if Rod won't come to her, she'll have none. And she's determined to go through the court case, you know, with or without him. Yeah, well, I still think the easiest way to sort all this out is for me to go and punch a third nostril through that rapist Addison's face. Taking advantage of a nice kid like Diana. Oh, I'm going if you're going to start your Edward G. Robinson stuff. What with your vendettas and your clubs? Living with you is like co-starring in some rotten old black and white movie. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. I'll behave, OK? Oh, come on, let's get out of here. You go the flicks, if you like. Might be an ally with G. Robinson on. Ah. The flicks? You'll have to do better than this. What about this meal you promised? Yeah. Tomorrow night, defo, I'm telling you. You're getting the works, the lot. Wine. Candlelight. Why? Why do I fall for it every time? Why do they all have to be here? I leave a home, I come back to a drop-in centre. Look, I don't exactly need this either, not with a fashion show coming up next week. But I could hardly object to the girl's relatives visiting her. But the Adams family? Well, apart from us, they're all she's got. You eat, Pat. We're off. God help her. I've told you she needs me. She knows where to find me. I never thought it would come to this. My own grandson's wife having to live with strangers. No offence. None taken, I'm sure. You could have still been living over the road. All that rush to get you out and the Shackletons haven't even moved in yet. Now you just take care of yourself. Yeah, uh, a few bob for a keep. Well, if you insist. Max. Well, really isn't necessary. I make sure you get plenty of rest. That's the important thing. Now yeah, listen, you know, uh, if she needs anything. Come on, Suffler. Let's get home. Right, hey, listen, I've just got to call in and uh, give Barry his car back, all right? Well, I'm not trailing to see him. I'll see you back at home. OK. You can be choosing your glad rags for our meal out tomorrow, can't you? Go on, then. Better be somewhere special. I don't know. Men. One way or another, they'll have the way with you. <laughs> I'll just go and put these flowers in some water. Thanks, all of you, for coming. Bite me tongue off. I shouldn't worry about it. I think Diana's probably a lot stronger than any of us give her credit for. Let's hope you're right, because the poor girl's gonna need all the strength she can muster once this court case starts. Anyway, sorry to have intruded, love. We'll uh, see ourselves out. Yeah, listen, uh, don't forget, you know, if she needs anything, like... Oh, right. Right, all. Oh, well... I know what Normandy felt like now after the invasion. <laughs> and I have noticed that Anna isn't here. Yeah, it's her night off. And I've half a suspicion who she might be spending it with since oh. she bristles every time Peter Harrison's name is mentioned. We don't know that for sure. Oh, oh, come on, Max. It's patently obvious she doesn't believe Diana's side of the story. I just hate the thought that everything that happens here is getting reported to the Harrison. Well, if you want a hassle-free nanny, you should go back to one who likes priests. Sorry. I am... Um... I've put the flowers in the sink for now. I think I'll get off to bed. I'll arrange them tomorrow. It's nice to know people think so highly of you. Not the one that matters, that way. Night, then. See you well. Well, I hope you're right about her being stronger than she looks. Yeah, so do I. Oh, you shouldn't have rushed, Jimmy. Could have called a cab. I brought it back earlier, Don. There was no sign of you. Why don't we just skip the excuses and get straight to the reason why I gave you the car in the first oh, place? It's all right. I followed Terry like you told me to, right? And I'll tell you something. That mini cab driver didn't have to take his time. Jimmy, will you just tell me where he went? It's all right, it's all right. Birkenhead. Straight up, Birkenhead. He went into one of them big aisle houses they've done up into what's it, you know, flats. And what did he get up to there? <sighs> Who knows? Don't worry, it wasn't your house of ill repute or anything. Well, I'm not judging by the people who were coming and going, anyway. I had a word with a couple of them. Don't worry, I was discreet. And what did you discreetly find out then, Jim? Well, they said that they see Terry, right, arrive at the house two, three times a week. He usually stays for about an hour or two. 
but neither of them knew which flat he visits or who lives in it. Well, come on, I did my best. Anyway, Teddy's a big lad, isn't he? Whatever he gets up to in Birkenhead, I'm sure he can take care of himself. Well, that's because you don't know him like I do. He could be in any kind of bother. Could be getting ripped off, anything. Behave. Do you reckon? Hey, listen, tell you what. I could nip back over, couldn't I? You know, have a little bit of a nose round and that, like. No. I'll tell you what. Just give me the address, eh? I reckon it's about time I had a little visit to this secret little lawn to Terry's. Try and suss out what he's up to, eh? by Brookside. <laughs> by Brookside. Yes, anyway. Brookside is back on Monday at 10 past 2. And if you want to watch the whole week's worth of editions, you can see the omnibus version. That's on Sunday mm, I at 10.30. Mm. You'll be watching that, won't you? Better taste of Marmite in my pyjamas. <laughs> Lovely. Now, tomorrow at 10 past 2, right here on Living Live, we've got the um, international entertainment news in Entertainment Now. And today we've been running our EastEnders competition. You can win one of five 15th anniversary versions, e videos. Mm, yes. Can. And to win one of those videos, <laughs> all you have to do is answer this very simple question. In EastEnders, who recently gave away baby Chloe for adoption? If you think you know the answer, call us now on 0870 980 some bacon if you feel you'd be better off with something inside you. No thanks, I couldn't eat anything at home. I thought you weren't worried about this court appearance today. I'm not. It's just... I never thought Diana would take it this far. Not to the point where I'd be standing up in court. Well, today is just for you to put your plea in and for them to fix up a date to hear the case. Yeah, I know. But it's just I feel like the legal ball has started rolling. It's too late to stop it. I feel a right to be standing around here asking stupid questions. What did you volunteer to do the survey for, then? Well, it's better than being in school doing the rest of the project. Anyway, I've got to take my mind off something. Excuse no me. No car, love. Do you think we're trying to sell them double glazing or something? Get your face that put it off. Try smiling. Well, you're not still threatening, are you, because you haven't seen Paul lately? Your kidney can stay in Manchester for all I care. Well, I thought you were going to ring him. That's why I hadn't been coming over. I did, but as much as saying he's not in. I didn't think he'd be like that. Excuse me. Um, we're doing a survey for a project in school. Would you mind answering a few questions? Like, um, are you looking for me by any chance? See you, girls. Actually, I'm just sneaking into the shop on my way to Patricia's, but I'm glad I've seen you. So am I. I was beginning to think we'd never get together after we both had to cancel last week. Well, since fate's bumped us into each other again, how about lunch today? Accepted. I mean, we'd better get together while we've got the chance. How about the Chinese? Well, same place we were going to meet last week. Uh, should we say 12? Uh, could we make it 12.30? I've got a bit of business to attend to over in Birkenhead. We can do lunch another time. No, I think we'd better make it now. Uh, so? 12.30, then. On a dot. Shop. All right. Hi, hi, girls. Not flogging time, shares in Toxteth, are we? Or is it double glazing? I told you. Would you answer some questions? It's a project for school. Yeah, of course. We'll have to be later on, though. I'm sorry, love. I was due to be in Ron's five minutes ago and I got to take these to the charity shop. Listen, I'll ask Ron if I can finish early tonight if he's taking me out. And it better be worth it. Hey, no danger. Whining and dining on a five star basis tonight, kid. Hey, she'll be glad I forgot about it when she sees what I've got lined up for her. Go ahead, then. What? You wanted me to answer questions for your thingy. Oh, yeah, right. You may or aren't you? Yeah, uh, last time I looked, yeah. Right. Do you wish of the following age groups do you belong? Well, he's 40 to 60, isn't he? Are they all as clever as you in your school? In your opinion, has Christmas become too commercialised? Jimmy. Uh, sorry, girls. Catch you later. Oh, 
Aye. Not unless they're in the bullring, you won't. What? I want you to go back to Birmingham. Not this minute. No, I want to give you the lowdown on what you've got to do first. But first of all, I've got to go over to Birkenhead and see what Teddy gets up to on those secret little strips of his. No, no, well, I'll hang round in the club. I'll see you there, well, sometime this heavy. Make it about three and then you can be back in Birmingham for seven. You yeah, what? Seven tonight? I've just fixed this mega night out with Jackie for tonight. Well, suit yourself. You can celebrate being back on the dole. Well, can't I go first thing in the morning? Not unless you don't want to work for me anymore. So make your mind up, because we've got to get back here for half twelve to meet someone. Well, how long have we got to be there? We'll pack your bag for a few days and we'll see how it goes. Catch you later. <sighs> We'd better get a move on if we're not going to be late. Peter's almost ready. I just didn't want to wind his nerves up by rushing him. I think mine are wound up as much as it's possible to be without snapping. Join the club. Yeah, in fact, of the three of us, I'd say he was the most calm. Yes, but we know better. He's just very good at hiding it. Yeah. Anyway, however worried we are, it's time to put a brave face on it. At the end of the day, we know he's innocent and they can't possibly find him guilty. Yeah. Ready, then? As I'll ever be. I had me done in the week, you know, but Ron said he let me go early to get ready. Now, listen, love, uh, that's what I came in to see you about, you know, tonight. Now, look, I know you, I know what you like. You're going to kick off at me, but honest, it's not my fault. What are you trying to tell me, Jimmy? I mean, I even had the place picked out, everything, yeah. you know. Jimmy. Our day for tonight, it's off. Off? What do you mean, off? Look. Honest, it's not down to me. It's Barry. He wants me to go back to Birmingham. Look, I'm just as sorry as you are, you know, love. Oh, no, you're not. My sorry goes back to the very first time I ever laid eyes on you. Come on, don't be saying that. All right. Eh? Uh, what time do you call this, then, huh? Sorry, I'm not used to late nights. Late? You left the bistro a good hour before we did. Marianne was worried you hadn't enjoyed yourself. Yeah, well, I didn't want to crack your style, did I? I know, I'm well past the trying to impress the stage. I'm marrying the girl, remember? Yeah. So, uh, where'd all this luck come from, then? Yeah, Father Christmas brought them. <laughs> oh, talking of which, you must tell me what to get Leo and Gemma. <laughs> We're going Christmas shopping this weekend. Brud, it'd be easier to tell you what they don't want. Yeah, really? I just don't understand it, you know. I mean, most of the parents at Leo and Gemma's school are no better off than I am. And they're promising their kids all 200-pound mountain bikes and stuff like that. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? But I suppose someone's got to breed the next generation of consumers. I mean, teach them to be in bigger debt than their daddies in. Still, mine are just going to have to settle for what prizes I can manage. Didn't uh, Joe's used to get theirs out of the catalogue? <laughs> yeah, but I can hardly ask her back on that basis, can I? Come back, Josie, all is forgiven as long as you've got your catalogue with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the kids will miss her, though, over Christmas. So have you got any plans? Only to give them the best time I can. Well, we can have a bit of fun with them, can't we? And I can make us all a nice big crimbled dinner. Yeah, um... Look, I'll be a minute, all right? Well, hang on, where, where are you going? Yes. Well, now you've got me in the Christmas spirit, I'm going to go and have a word with Ron Nixon, see if I put me a Christmas tree one side. Yeah, Mick, Mick, hang on. Oh. Cheers. Look, I was looking forward to it just as much as you were, but Barry says... Oh, Barry says! Oh, so you just drop me, do you, to go off to Birmingham on some seedy little errand for Barry Ron Grant? Yeah, but if you just listen... No! No! Well, go on, then. Go on, before he notices his lapdogs off its leads. Oh, come on, Just Lord. go, Jimmy. Go on, get out. Get out, you lousy Ron... Just go, Jimmy, will you? Get out! <sighs> All right, Jackie? What? I'll call her later. Oh. <sighs> What's going on? Ron, you, you can't do that. Did 
your stuff. <laughs> I, uh, we Not now, have... eh? I don't know where he goes. Bit of a ding-dong battle, on I, was he? <laughs> you could say that. What's he done now? Oh, what hasn't he done? You know he forgot my birthday. He was supposed to be taking me out tonight for a meal to make up. And he's let you down. I know. I know it's my fault. Fault for us every time. Well, this is the last. Oh, well, yeah. And how many last times will this be then, eh, Jack? I know. No, I'm stupid. Hey, hey. If there is a fool round here, is that stupid husband of yours for not treating you better? I'm a soft mare for putting up with it, you mean? Will you stop talking about yourself like that? There's thousands of fellas that give the right arm to have somebody like you. <laughs> Why? Look at me. Hey, and loads do, you know. Oh, I've seen them ogling, you know, with a packet of grape nuts. <laughs> What about you and Mrs Dainty? Who? You mean the one with the, the glasses and the hairy mole? <laughs> well, she thinks I am a pack of the great nuts, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, that's me, innit? Good old Ronnie. Everybody's friend. Nobody's fancy. Ah, oh, go on. Somebody somewhere must fancy it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Better open up. wonder what's going on. Are you Peter Andrew Harrison? I am, yes. And you reside at Nine Brookside Close, Manor Park, Liverpool. Is that correct? Yes. Peter Andrew Harrison, you are charged as follows. You are charged with rape, contrary to Section 1-1 of the Sexual Offences Act, 1956. And the particulars of the offence are that you, Peter Andrew Harrison, on the 21st day of October 1992, raped Diana Mary Corkill. To that indictment, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Please be seated. Yeah, Jimmy, it's Barry here. Listen here, I want you to go to a Chinese Chinatown, yeah? Berry Street, top of Bowl Street. Yeah, the Far East. There'll be a woman waiting there for me. Her name's Karen Clark. I want you to find her and tell her that I can't make it right. Well, just make up the best reason that you can. 
Do you tell them I'm sorry, right? We'll get a cab then, Jimmy. Yeah, I'll sort it out with you later. Ta-da. You and it got fired. Miss Benson will kill you. So let it. I don't see why you should be sitting around here all day. I've got work after school anyway. Watching your boss like at the petrol station then? Oh, he's boring. I don't know why they moved George though. I don't think this new fella's staying, he's just filling in. Right then, we might as well do some more questionnaires. Oh, you can, I don't feel like it. Oh, come on, you can't be missing Paul that much. Not as much as I'm missing something else. Like what? Like me period. If you must know, I think I'm pregnant. You what? Jack, like about before. Haven't you gone yet? Yeah, I've just got a nip into town. I'm just waiting for a cab. Look, well, Laura, just wanting to understand that... Oh, I do. I understand that everything and everybody comes before I do with you, Jimmy. It's not like that. It's always been like that with you and me. <sighs> Look, I'll be back from Birmingham Monday. Tuesday at the latest, OK? Do you know something? I honestly don't think I care anymore. Get lost, Jimmy. Look, I'll try and catch you before I get off, OK? <laughs> don't do me any favours. Yeah, well, everybody's late sometimes. And not me. And I've been feeling funny as well. But that could be anything. There's only one way to find out, isn't it? You have to get one of those predictor thingies. Or it'll be a false alarm, you'll see. All right, girls. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, what about it staying up? I don't know. You've just missed this Christmas, that way. <laughs> oh, have you finished with all your terrible Christmas jokes now? No chance. Just wait till I get into those crackers when we're having crumble dinner. Oh, listen, Mick, I don't want to let you down. About what? About I don't want to let Marianne down, either. About Christmas, you mean? No, you're both meant to come to my place. I didn't expect you want to spend it without it. Yeah, but the trouble is... Marianne's expecting to spend Christmas with her folks in London. And she wants me to go with her. Oh, I see. Ah, no problem. It's just that Marianne's not sort of expecting me, you know? Future son-in-law and all that. Yeah, like I said, you get it. Um. When are you planning on taking off? Oh, we haven't really planned anything, exactly. I never thought I'd be into all this pleasing the family bit, but with Marianne, it's different. You know, I really want her folks to like me, for her sake. I'm just sorry it means letting you down, especially at Christmas. Ah, oh, forget it. I get to have both take a legs if you're not around, don't I? I'd rather be with you and the kids. You know that, don't you? Look, me, Leo and Gemma are gonna have a great time. You go and get me some uh, scaffold or something, and we'll get old Santa here to stand up if it kills us. <laughs> Just hang on, it won't be a minute, mate. Oh, you're all right, don't worry. I'm not trying to chat you up or nothing like that. Oh, I can assure you it wouldn't be worth your while. Hey, listen, if you are Karen, I've got a message for you from Barry. I think you mean an excuse, and I don't know if I want to hear it right now. Hey, love, I'm not exactly having the best of days myself, you know. Barry said to tell you to be sorry, but something came up. I really don't have time for this. So why don't you just run back to your employer, and I'll get on with something important, like my work, OK? I'll tell them you're understood then, shall I? Eh? Oops! <laughs> <laughs> My darling, what is this thing that has come between us? Um, a dozen tins of dog food by the looks of it. I'm thinking <laughs> more romantic things. Well, it's like we were saying the other week, isn't it, Jack? Neither of us gets much practice of being romantic these days. Or if Jimmy put the sparkle back into your life. Oh, you're kidding. As usual, any fireworks Jimmy comes up with turn out to be duds. I thought women were supposed to find that sort of thing exciting. You know, fellas who messed them about, in there. 
professional. That's just a rumour put around by men who mess women about. Now, mm. I would settle for somebody who fancied me and treated me right. Yeah. yeah anyway, at least I won't need to ask for time off to uh, doll myself up now Jimmy's not taking me out. <laughs> Do you know what? He's a fool, that husband of yours, Jack. He's treating you the way he does. And the way you look fine to me. Those two years, so nice. <laughs> Thanks. You know, my mum always used to say it was my best feature. Like it was the only one I'd got. Get away. you got loads of good features, you. Now, me? <laughs> I'll be happy with just the one. <laughs> You've got loads going for you? Oh, yeah. Now, well, I'm good for is giving them a laugh down the Legion. Well, I think you're a lovely fella. Just wish you meant that. Shop. Oh. All right, man. Uh, where's Jackie? Uh, she's not here, mate. Uh, I think she's got me hairdressers. Or did she say she might go around to the Farnham to see Diana? Oh, God. I wanted to see her before Barry gets back and sends me off to Birmingham. <sighs> what a bloody day. First time mine had been started up probably since I was a teenager. Jimmy might come back. No, he'd be halfway to Birmingham by now, won't he? Well, someone else might come in. I suppose you're right. Don't want to start any silly rumours on, do we, eh? Especially when we haven't given him anything to have a go at. about anybody else, but I could murder a cup of tea. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of a stiff gin and tonic. That court's enough to put the fear of God into anybody. Yeah, well, in my case, it worked. Mind you, I suppose I'll have to get used to it every day starting next week. I didn't think they'd start the court case so soon. I was expecting them to set it eight months from now, weren't you? Oh, I'd sooner get it over with. What the hell do you think he's staring at? Just ignore him. Yeah, you might well pretend you haven't seen me, but just don't take any notice of him. Either of you bring a key. You said you'd got yours. That's right. Go on, run in and hide. Look, just what is it you Peter. want? I don't have to hide from anybody. Oh, don't you? You're lucky I haven't caught up with you before now, sunshine. After what you've done to our Diana. Look, this isn't actually solving anything, is it? Don't oh, forget it, Dad. It's got nothing to do with him anyway. Hey, you! That was my nephew's wife you were messing round with. Have you seen the state she's in? Her marriage is down the plug because of you, you rapist. Hey, I'm warning you, that's enough. Do you want me to call the police? All right, go on then. Call them, go on. Because they'll well know your address, won't they? Hey, what with a son, a rapist, and an husband, a shoplifter. <coughs> oh!
Brookside will be back at the same time tomorrow on Living. Still to come this afternoon at 3.30, Judge Judy meets a fiancé, an ex-fiancé who wants his engagement ring back, and there's the Real Holiday Show at 4 o'clock. Now, this afternoon, we've been talking about this new curfew that the police are going to have powers to impose on under 16-year-olds, and they won't be allowed out after 9 o'clock. We're asking for your calls and emails on that subject. I've had a great call from Stephanie who says, I've got a 15-year-old daughter and she's not allowed out on the streets, especially after 9 o'clock. I think it would be a good idea, as I know that my daughter has lied to me about where she's been. She tells me she's at a friend's house when she's actually getting into trouble on the street. All parents should really be backing this plan. So do give us a call or email us with your opinions.